in this part as you see on your screen we will demonstrate the use of SolidCam's 2.5D milling options. We will show the options such as face milling, pocket milling, profiles, T-slot options, drilling, thread mill. We will also show working in different positions, this first position, position second position for this hole, third position for this back side over here and various other options. We'll start off by going into SolidCam, creating a new part for milling. And the part that we'll be creating will be called 2.5D milling. And we'll simply say OK to create our new part. Now the next thing I'll do within my milling data, milling part data, uh, window. I'll first choose my CNC controller and let's for example we choose the controller we'll take an Akuma controller. Then my coordinate system I'll choose my coordinate system by defining my first coordinate system and I want the Z to be perpendicular to the surface as you can see we have different positions we may want to machine at. So in my first position I'd like to choose would be perpendicular to this surface over here. So I can choose either this surface or this surface. And I'll automatically get a home position where the Z is perpendicular to that surface and it's on the top uh, bottom left hand corner of the part. Now if I want to change the position, I don't want it exactly on this point, but I'd rather have it in the middle of the part. As you'll note, you'll see that there are points that come up automatically on the part itself, such as the middle of this part over here. I simply go to pick origin, click on that point, and my home position was moved over as seen over here. I'll suffice with this information right now, and I'll simply click on OK. Now in this window you can see we have our coordinate system data, such as our tool start level, our clearance level, part upper level, and our part lower level which is given to us automatically or I can go to the part itself and simply click on the bottom and I'll get the same value as seen over here. Okay, I'll simply say OK. And now I would like to create another home position so that I can be able to later on drill out this hole. I'll simply go and add a home position. Again, if I click on this part, I will get a home position in a the corner. Then another way I can choose a home position, by the way, is not by selecting a face, but if necessary, I could also go to define. And in that particular case, when I do define, I first pick my origin. Let's say it will be over here. I'll say my X direction, which will be over here and my Y direction over there. And I can get my home position using the Find option. I'll simply again say OK. My part low level this time will be at the bottom over here. As you see, minus 83. And for my third position, since I do have to mill out this area over here also, I'll simply add another position by clicking and saying add. And this time I'll choose the option instead of corner of model box, I'll be using select face, but instead of corner of model box, I'll go directly to the option that says top center of model box. And by simply clicking on any of these surfaces, I will automatically get a home position at the top center of the part itself as seen over here. I'll simply say OK. This time my part lower level, I'll simply click on this face because I don't want to go past this face as I'm milling. Simply say OK. And we now have all our home positions. Now by clicking on the V mark on top over here, 
I'm, si I'm simply accepting everything I've done up until now, and now I'm ready to start defining my operations. Now, the first operation that I'd like to do on this part would be to face mill the top of the material over here. And for that, we have an option, a new option, I should say, called face. By choosing face, when I go to my geometry, all I have to do, I can choose model or face or profile, but if I choose model and click on define, just by clicking on the part and accepting that, I will automatically get the boundaries that are around the part itself, as you can see over here. All the boundaries have now been picked automatically, the outside boundaries of the part. It knows how to work over there. The next thing I have to do is choose a tool. And in this particular case, I'd like to add a new tool of a face mill. And the face mill that I'll be using will be a, let's use a 100 millimeter diameter face mill. And we'll just select that tool as it is. Now my levels, my upper level will be let's say two millimeters for the excess material they may have on top. My face depth will be up until the face over here itself. My step down, I'll leave it at two millimeters. But now when I go into make technology, I'll skip over this for a moment and I'll go directly into my offset. I can say, okay, I want to have a floor offset, let's say 0.3 millimeters and do a finish cut. Not also the pictures on the side itself. Now, as far as how we do the top, we have several ways. We can either do it by hatch, as you see in the picture going back and forth, or contour. But in this particular case, if the tool is wide enough that it covers the entire part, which is the case over here, we can do what we call one pass. Where as you've seen the picture over here, the tool will just make one simple pass in the middle, exact middle of all the borders that we've picked around the part, of the part itself. And I can tell it in my data area that I want 110% of the tool to go past the end. Or I can use a value of the tool. I'll simply say save and calculate. And I'll simulate my part now. And as you see, if I do solid verify, my tool will come down, do one step at a time, goes across both times, and the top has been machined. Now, let's just say for argument's sake that I did not have a face mill, but instead all I had was a regular end mill and say the diameter of my end mill was, we'll choose a new end mill over here, and say my diameter was, oh, 25 millimeters. So doing what we call in my technology area of one pass will not suffice. So I can use something else called hatch, where the two will go back and forth, back and forth, until it finishes machining the part. Now, in my technology area, I can control what angle I want to work at. I can control how far I want it to go past the part itself. I also have control of how much past I want to go on the edges of the part. 25% or a value of the tool, 6.25 millimeters of the tool. I can go zigzag or one way. And if I want, I can even add a fillet as it goes around over here. Let's just simply say OK over here. Another important factor is my overlap. I can say how much of the tool I want to overlap between one step and another. Let's just bring it down to 10% uh, of the tool to overlap. And I'll simply say Save and Calculate. If I were to simulate, and let's do this in the top view using my host CAD simulation. You'll note 
and I'll show my tool, you'll note that the tool goes down, across, covers the entire part. So in this particular case, choosing my geometry was made very simple. No extra sketches were needed. And I made a simple uh, pass on, top, on the top. If I had a big enough tool, I used one pass. If I didn't, I used hatch. Now, in my next operation, I like to mill around the outside of the part. So for this, I'll go into my operation, and I'll choose the option of profile. Now the geometry that I'll be using will be around this part over here. So I'll simply click on this line over here as the curve I want to use, but I want to change direction, so I simply click on change direction. And I use the option of auto constant Z to chain to to capture my entire chain around the part all on the same Z level. Now the uh, tool that I will be using, I'll create a tool that is in diameter of 20 millimeters. And I'll say 20 millimeters for the tool. The amount of the entire length of the tool itself, how much is sticking out of the holder, Let's stick it out of the holder of, say, 45 millimeters. The shoulder length of the tool itself. The cutting length. I can even add my holder if I want. And, the, and I'll use a holder from my holder table. As you see over here. Choose any holder I prefer. Let's, for example, take the BT-40. ER and in my levels I have my upper level as a top surface over here my profile depth in this particular case I like to go down to the very bottom over there and I will not use my delta depth for the simple reason that since I'm going past the bottom over here anyway, it's not necessary to use my delta depth to go further down. Now my technology area, I'll be working on my left side of the part. If I go into here, you can see that if I use my top view, that my tool will be on the outside. I'm working on the left-hand side of my toolpath. Uh, I'll be using compensation. And what I will do now also is I would only do a finish cut and go down every 12 millimeters. Now you can see every single time I choose a field, you also see the pictures on the side that helps you understand exactly what that particular field does. Now the next thing I would like to do is go into my link area and let's say I'd like to go in have a lead in of let's say four millimeters using the arc option as seen in the diagram on the bottom over here and for argument's sake let's just do a lead out with normal of also four millimeters we'll do save and calculate and the simulation I like to do right now would be the 2D simulation let's just minimize this window a little bit and we'll do this one step at a time. Now you'll see my tool is going in. Went in with an arc. And it went down to minus 12 millimeters. As it goes around. To the next step. Minus 24. And if I go to solve verify. You'll see. That this is all taken care of. Now let's take a look again at the 2D simulation and let's focus in on this area over here. As you note, when the tool goes around, because the tool is too big for this corner, the tool will not machine out 
that particular corner. To deal with this, we have something called rest machining, rest material. What I want to do right now is create a new operation using all the same settings that we have here, but just change the tool and use something called rest material. All I have to do while I'm in this point is just to simply say save and copy. You'll note a new operation has been formed now, and it's now open within that new operation. All I have to do now is go into my tool, select a tool, and I'd like to create a tool that is an end mill of six millimeters. My levels and technology, my levels will stay the same. In my technology area, this time I'll use the option called rest material chamfer and use the option called rest. And in the data area, what I have to fill in is just what the diameter of my previous tool was, which was 20 millimeters. I just say here. And I can add an extension. In other words, how far past do I want it to go the actual start point? Say I'll add an, an extra uh, 2 millimeters on each side. And I'll simply say save and calculate. Again, I'll do my simulation. And again, I'll use my 2D option of a simulation. And this time you'll note that the tool goes into that corner and finishes that quarter. If I were to use both of the simulations, you'll see the first one does not go into that corner, and the second one continues on to fill in that corner by simply using the option of what we call rest material. What I'd like to do now is to deal with this slot that's going around the part. And to cut this part, uh, what I would like to do is use a Woodruff cutter, or a T-slot cutter as it's also known. And for that we have a specific operation called T-slot. Now, my geometry in this particular case will be this boundary, this intrade boundary that you see over here. I'll just reverse the direction and do automatic constant Z. That's the boundary I want the tool to get to. The tool that I will be using, as I said before, will be a Woodruff or a T-slot cutter, as you can see over here. The T-slot cutter, in this particular case, is a 25 millimeter in diameter at the bottom, where my arbor diameter is 10 millimeters, and my cutting length, which is very important, is 4 millimeters. My levels are taken directly from the part exactly the way it is, it's exactly what you put in, minus 10 millimeters over here, and my T-slot depth, as you can see in my picture, that means I should choose the bottom of my T-slot. Now in my technology area, very similar to profile, we have working on the left hand side, if I were to show you my geometry from the top view, you see that my tool is going up until the uh, geometry that I've chosen. I have working rough or finish or both. And when I have my offsets, not only do I have a wall offset, as you can see in the picture, but I also have a ceiling offset and a floor offset if necessary. I'm just going to do right now a finish cut without doing a rough cut and I'm going to do a simple save and calculate. Now you'll note obviously that when I do my simulation and I'll use the option of solid verify the tool will go down and there will be a crash as seen over here. That's because I did not do a lead in or lead out. Okay, I'll deal with that in a moment, but let's just finish our simulation all the way through. And you'll note my tool is starting from the top going down to the bottom, cleaning up this entire area as you see over here, but we still have to deal now with this crash. Now, 
before we deal with the links as far as going in and going out, there's one more point. Something there's something else I should point out to you. We have something here called cut from. You notice I cut from the top to the bottom, but if I want, I can also cut from the bottom to the top, or from the middle, or from the middle to the bottom, and then completing the top, or just the opposite from the middle to top, and then completing the bottom. Now let's take care of the links, something I didn't do before. I'll go in with a link of an arc of, say, 6 millimeters, and I'll have my lead out the same as my lead in. Now when I do save and calculate and simulate, you'll note, as I do solid verify, the tool again will go down, but this time it goes down outside the part and works its way in. Now you'll note because I also picked middle to top, it started from the middle and it's working its way up. And as it goes around, now you'll see it's cleaning the bottom of the part itself. In the next operation I'd like to demonstrate, I want to clean the area from here up until the step, and I'll do that by using a simple pocket operation. If I have to go into operations, add operations, simply choose the pocket option. My geometry in this particular case will be this area around here. Choose that with the automatic constant Z. Again, if I take the top view, you can see that's my boundary over there. The tool I'll use will be a 12 millimeter end mill and I'll add that on now of 12 millimeters and my heights if I want to add a holder on not a problem at all I have my feeds and speeds and selecting my tool. My levels, my upper level will be the surface over here and my pocket depth will be up until the surface as seen over there. My technology, I'll be using a contour option. I have my wall offsets, floor offsets and in my link area I have my ramping and I want to go in using the helical motion as you can see helical motion as you can see in the diagram on the side in my data you'll note I have my angle and my radius that I will be using my lead out I'll have it as an arc of two millimeters let's just do a simple save and calculate and simulate again I use the option of solid verify and you'll note as the tool goes in, now slow it down, it did a circular motion, a helical motion, and we basically have that surface cleaned again. I'll do this again slowly. As you saw, the tool went in in a circular motion and cleaned the entire floor. Now let's do this just one more time, but this time I use host CAD. And if I look the top, take the top view, you can see my tool going around. But let's get rid of show tool for a second and do it this way. And let's concentrate now at these corners over here. You'll note that as the tool goes around, gets to this corner over here, it makes a sharp turn. This is not necessarily always good for the machine. So what we have is within our technology area, for data of our contour, we have the option of how we want to deal with our corners. If we use fillet, you note that it'll round out those those corners as we go along. If I do save and calculate and simulate now, you'll note that all these corners are now have a radius. There is one other option that I can also use is that we have something else called smooth. By smooth, what actually happens, and I'll show you that in the simulation itself, is that as the tool comes around, remember we were working at a high speed, 
since working at high speed does not learn like sharp corners, it, what it does is it actually makes a loop around, which is fine with the machine, and then continues cleaning out. Also, it, what it does by that, it also cleans out these corners as it, going, as it goes around. What I'd like to do now is continue on within this area, cleaning up all this pot, all these, this entire area over here. And this time, instead of using all different types of pocket operations, I'll use a simple option that we have in 3D milling. And what I'll do here is very simple. I'll use my target, that's my geometry itself. And in my working area, I'll simply say cut only the rest material. In other words, only work in the areas where there is actually material to be taken off. If I were to go into my tools, I'll select the tool, my 12 millimeter tool. In my levels, I just leave it exactly the way it is. In my technology area, I choose the rough option of contour. Let's say I'll go down every, say every 10 millimeters. And then I'm going to also use the option called clean flat. Clean flat, what that does is if we take a look at the part itself, you'll see that sometimes as I'm going down, there may be areas which may not fit in within the 10 millimeter step down. What this clean flat will do is also stop on those areas and clean those specific areas up and before going down. Let's just do a simple save and calculate. And then we'll do a simulation. Now, if we were to simulate the part, again, using the option of Solid Verify, you'll note that the tool will work inside that area itself, cleaning up every single area which that particular tool can work in. Now, to clean the rest of those areas itself, where the tool cannot get into, what we'll do is simply say, Save and Copy. We've created now a new operation based on the previous operation. And this time we'll change our tool and we'll use a 6 millimeter end mill. And I'll leave it exactly remember the way it was before. Remember if you have my geometry area over here, we still have the area of cut only rest material. Now the only thing I'll add on to this is in my technology area, First of all, I'll change my step down to every 6 millimeters instead. But what I'll do now is I decide, you know what, let's do also a finish cut. And I'll choose the option of constant Z. In my data area, I'll use constant Z wall machining and go down every 6 millimeters. I'll use the option of clean contours of flat areas, which will clean those areas where does not fit within the six millimeters and in addition I'll also say let's finish off the floors. Now if I have to do save and calculate and then simulate my operation using solid verify you'll note that the tool will first go in and clean those areas where it cannot go before them just slow it down a bit. First working in those particular areas And now, it's also working on the floors, all the walls, to do the finish of the part itself, as seen here. Now, the next thing I'd like to do on this part, from this side, is to drill out these holes, which are M3 tapped holes. Now normally to do this I would use three different operations, one for a center drill, one for a regular drill, and one for a tap. But we have a different tool in our program called machining process, which actually would allow me just to simply pick the position, the type of tap I want to do, and all of a sudden I will get three operations immediately created for, this, for these holes within one option. 
if I were to go into my operations and add the option of add machining process, I can go from my tool table, MP tool table, and you'll note I have different types of machining processes, such as one for tapping millimeters with chamfer drill, tapping millimeter chamfer drill with center drill, I have profile options, all different types of options for machining process. What I'd like to do is use the option of tapping a millimeter and chamfer it with the center drill. And as you can see over here, it's basically creating a millimeter tapped hole using three tools, a center drill, drill, and a tap. I'll simply pick that option. And what I'll do now is choose M3 by 0 0.5, which is the uh, pitch that I need. I have to choose my geometry, so I'll simply define my geometry by clicking on the surface itself. I need to enter my lower, uh, my upper job, the upper level. I'll simply click on the surface over here. My lower level will be at the very bottom of the hole itself. So I'll click right into the center over there. And all I have to do right now is simply click on Insert. You'll note on the side over here that automatically three operations will be created and they will all be calculated. If I were to simulate these three options, these three jobs that I've created, these three operations that I've created, I'll do it in Solid Verify. And if I were to do my first operation in our simulation, our first tool, I'll just slow this down a little bit. My center drill goes down and does a center drill operation on the holes. My second tool goes down and you notice it drills out the holes using a pecking option for drilling out the holes. And my last is simply my tap drilling out, tapping out every single one of those holes exactly the way it needs to be done. Now the next thing I'd like to do is deal with this hole on the side over here. Now since this is a large hole, what I'd like to do is actually mill it out using the pocket operation. You should also notice, however, that this hole is not on our first home position. It's being done on the side, so therefore we have to use a different home position. So what I'll do is very simply choose my operation of pocket. And at the very top, take a look what happens when I do this. At the very top, by Mac 1 position 1, I'll simply change that to Mac 1. Position 2, you'll note that the part automatically turns to the proper position that I need to work on. All I have to do now is simply define my geometry, the circle over there. I'll go down now and choose my tool. And I'll use a 12 millimeter end mill. My levels, my upper level in this particular case, will be that surface over there. And my pro pocket depth, you'll note, if I turn the part around, I have to go to somewhere around here. So I'll simply click over there. And then I'll just simply change this value to 15 millimeters. I have my technology of how I go into the part, offsets. I'll simply do a quick save and calculate and then simulate my operation. And again, I'll use my solid verify simulation. And you'll note the tool will go down. Let me just turn it to the other side. 
until it passes and completes that entire hole. Now what I'd like to do in addition is that since I'm going into uh, full material over here, I like to first create a drilled hole so it will be a lot easier for my tool to work in that area itself. All I have to do is simply create a new operation, add operation drill, and for my geometry, since I want to base it on the pocket itself, I automatically have a new um, geometry for my uh, for my drill called drill for P contour four, which is the actual pocket itself, as you can see over there. In other words, the pocket itself automatically creates geometry for the drill. All I have to do right now is simply add a tool. Now I'll add a simple drill. And I'll use a drill of, let's say, 10 millimeters. Select my levels. Again, my upper level will be here. My lower level, I'll simply write in as 15 millimeters. And if I want, I can say also, I want my 15 millimeters to go to my full diameter depth. And in my technology area, if I want, I can use drill cycle type of PEC and go down in a step down of, say, every five millimeters. Now, when I do save and calculate, note that the operation is automatically before the pocket. It puts itself there automatically. If I were to do simulate, and I'll simulate both the operations using Solid Verify, you'll note that the first tool will go down a drill. And my second tool, my end mill, will go exactly in the same spot and mill out that hole. By putting that drill to before, it made it a lot easier for the tool to work. Now, if we take a look at our uh, SolidCam Manager, you'll see that all our operations over here are part of Mac 1 Position 1. You can see them lined up one after the other. And whatever was done in Position 2 can be seen here in Position 2. Now the next thing I'd like to do on this part is actually now work in position 3 and I'd like to machine this surface over here. So what I'll do is I'll simply go into my operations, add operations, and I'll use actually a pocket. I'll use, as I've said, Mac 1 position 3. And in my geometry, what I'd like to do is actually have my boundaries as the outside boundary and the boundary of this island, as you see over here. What I'll do to, in order to choose that will use the option of multi-chain. Simply click on the surface. I get all the chains that I need over there. And the chains that I don't need, such as 3 and 4, I can simply erase them from my list. And I have the chains that I need to be working on, as seen over here. The tool that I will be using, I'll be using again a 10 millimeter end mill, a 12 millimeter end mill. My levels, my pocket depth will be at that surface over there at two, minus two and a half millimeters. And in my technology area, I will use contour. Now if I want, since I want to go past that area, I can simply say wall offset of a negative value, say minus 16, and that would actually clear the outside wall, but since my island offset is zero, it'll stay at zero. Or I can do something else. In my geometry area, 
if I go back to my define geometry and if I right click on my first chain we have the option called mark open edges by mark open edges I can simply mark the outside boundary of my part and simply accept that and you'll note now that that boundary is in a black color marking it as an open boundary all I have to do now in my technology you'll note now that I have what we call approach from the outside this is automatically opened up the moment I've created an open boundary and if I now do simply save and calculate you'll see that during the simulation I use the option of solid verify and I'll do this one step at a time my tool will go down from the outside as you saw and start milling away the part itself now you'll note that this area was not able to be milled because the tool even though we did have an open boundary only went out to a certain uh, amount past that section over there what we can do is very simple is we can go into our contour or even better yet we can go into our extension area of how much we want to go past our part and we can say you know what let's go further out I want to go past the part say 100 percent if I were to say save and calculate and now do my simulation you'll note again using solid verify that the tool this time will go all the way out and we've cleared that area over there what I'd like to do now is even though we've already created an operation for working in these holes over here the tapped holes as we've done before I'd like to show you a different option for working on tapped holes we have now the option called thread mill in other words using a mill specifically designed for milling out threads what we'll simply do is go into operations and we'll go to our option called thread milling now the obviously the up the position I need is position one so choose position one and the geometry is the same geometry that I've used for my actual drilling of the hole. It's picked the exact same way. Simply pick my geometry. Now I'd like to choose my tool and the tool that I will be using if I do add you'll note only the tools that I can be used that I can use in this operation appear. Now I choose a tool of thread mill. Now I can take my tool and fill in all the information by simply going to my metric table and say okay I need a tool that's for M3 0 0.5 I'll get all the information that I need I'll simply select that tool my levels my upper level in this particular case will be over there and my thread depth I can simply go into my t hole and say okay I want my thread depth to be all the way to the bottom over there and in my technology area you'll note that I'm working already in internal my major thread diameter is automatically put in there because of the tool that I've chosen I'm working right-handed and I'm working from the bottom to the top my link you'll notice all of a sudden is arc radius 
and it's auto automatically calculated according to the tool that I'm using. If I were to do save and calculate and simulate, let's take a quick look at the simulation and you'll see that the tool goes to the bottom and goes and works its way up to the top doing a thread mill. Now let's just do one little change in our tool itself and what I'll do is I'll change the amount of the actual amount of teeth that we have in our tool. Number of teeth instead of two I'll say I have five teeth. I'll do select save and calculate. Now let's take a look at our toolpath itself. You'll notice that since it can do more than it can actually do five teeth at the same time so all it does is makes one turn, jumps up to the next level and then fills in from the area where it left off instead of going around all the way to the very very top. Now let's take a look at the G code that we've gotten in this operation. If we take a quick look, you'll note that we have every single hole is sent to a subroutine, but we only have one subroutine for every single one of these holes. The position and then the subroutine. If I go to my subroutine, you'll see that it positioned itself in Z minus area. Works in G91, working its way up to the top. And then it just simply goes to the next area and does the exact same subroutine again. In other words, our G code is really small. It does not take up much room in your, comp in your controller and very easy to work with. Now let's take a moment and talk about synchronization. Now let's say we have to make some changes in a part, such as, let's take for example this step over here, and instead of having it at 10 millimeters, I'm going to have it at 20 millimeters. And I'll rebuild it. As you can see now, it's 20 millimeters high. And let's just take this particular arc that we have in this corner over here. And we'll change this fillet. Instead of 10 millimeters, we'll change it to a 5 millimeter fillet. And we'll simply save our part. Now, when we go back into Salakim and recall our operation, you'll note that a sign comes up saying, a window pops up saying that the design model was changed. Do you want to replace it? I'll simply say yes, I want to replace the part. And you'll note now that the part that comes up will be the new part with the step that's higher up and with the smaller fillet in this corner over here. Now if I go to my operation over here, you'll know that also the operations that this was effect that if that this affected it have rebuild signs there. All I have to do is go to my operations and say synchronize and calculate all. What will happen now is very simple. Is that everything will be automatically synchronized and and everything that has to be calculated will now be calculated also. And all that has been done. If I'll simply run my simulation now, I'll just run my simulation now on we'll say this pocket and these 3D operations over here. Do a simple simulation of my solid verify. You'll note that I have a smaller radius now 
in this area over here and my step on top has been also changed according to the height that I've created now being higher up than it was before we have now completed machining the part and we have now demonstrated also machining this part for a complete 2.5D options with some 3D options in there also and working on multi-side within SolidCam.